What's going on, guys? Welcome to the long-awaited, namespaced, unprivileged LXC containers video. So this is sort of the feature in my mind that makes LXC usable in production. The idea is that LXC runs as an unprivileged process so that even if somebody gets root on the container, they can't do things with rootly powers on the machine. So it's a little extra layer of security. It comes with some limitations. So like mounting devices is out, uh, you know, loop mounts, make nod, it's not gonna happen. So if you need those things, you'll obviously need a privileged container, but you probably already know that. So I have warned you. I'm using Stefan Graber's tutorials. He's got a set of blog posts, which I'll link to again. I think I linked to them in each video about LXC. He's one of the main developers for Linux containers. So his requirements, I'm just, uh, I'm giving you this directly from his list. It's kernel 313 or higher. Username spaces have to be enabled in the kernel. It requires a recent version of Shadow that supports sub UIDs and sub GIDs per user C groups on all controllers and uh, a version of LXC that is basically 1.0. So the very first thing you wanna do, of course, is apt-get update and then apt-get upgrade. From there, we'll start. So once you've got the newest packages installed, we're gonna sudo apt-get install, obviously LXC, but also UID map. But we're gonna run I uh, might have to do this with sudo, but, and you can check here, everything looks good. And here we go. The basic process is you add a user, you map some high UIDs and GIDs to that user so that that user can use those global UIDs and GIDs in his little namespace for running extra containers and processes. And then you sort of locally set up a container configuration, downloading a special root FS um, that's created by the developers of LXC. That root FS will get you over the hump of, you know, most distros when you install a root FS need to do all kinds of rootly things while bootstrapping the distro. And these root images that you can download basically prevent you from having to do that. So you can do them from an unprivileged account. After that, we just uh, make sure everything's configured right and try to start it. So this should actually be pretty straightforward. When it doesn't work, it can get very complicated. Like I tried doing this about a month ago on Debian Jesse, and it just went horribly wrong um, because there's just lots of functionality missing that because the LXC developers are happen to be Ubuntu developers, you'll see there first. So unfortunately, this can probably be pretty hairy on other distros, I'm not entirely sure. So let's see how this works on uh, just a regular version of Ubuntu Trusty. So first we'll add the user. <laughs> not unprivileged yet. Don't need any of this stuff, you can just leave it blank. Just keep hitting enter. We've got a user. I'm gonna paste this in. I've already got this, but it's user mod add sub UIDs, and user mod add sub GIDs. And we're basically, what this just means is we're mapping UID and GID 100,000 to 165, 536. So this many. 65536 to this user. So he can freely use these UIDs and GIDs in his process and, well, user namespaces. We're gonna give execute permissions to LXC user. My God, am I gonna just do this as root or keep typing sudo? I'm not sure. I'm not quite bright enough to just go into the root account, so. So now it's time to log in as that user. So I'm logged in as the LXC user. We are going to create the default config for the LXC machines now.
config lxc default conf. So I've pasted this in. Here you go. Virtual Ethernet. This is just our bridging device. Bring it up and then map UIDs and GIDs to these global UIDs and GIDs. When you save that, we're going to log back out and we're going to edit Etsy LXC usernet just to set the permissions for this guy. Oops, there we go. So we'll do LXC user. The type will be VETH, so virtual Ethernet interfaces attached to this bridge. You'll have to use whatever bridge name is actually correct. You can just check that with this config. And we'll say this person could have a max of 10 VETH interfaces. So basically 10 containers, because you're rarely going to want more than one VETH interface in a container. Save that. Now we're just going to check to see the sub UIDs and sub GIDs. Mm. That's weird. It looks like I already got a bunch. Mm. That's interesting. So actually, it looks like when I created the user, I automatically got a whole stack of UIDs and sub GIDs. And then when I set it manually, I did that again. So this is me setting it during this tutorial. And this is me just creating the user. So you might want to try um, just mapping this into the containers config and don't worry about assigning extra sub gids and sub uids to the user because that's kind of what it's looking like right now so now using one of those download images those special download images that i was talking about that the lxc devs have made available we are going to give it a whirl oh whoops i'm root oh my bad lxc user okay now we're lxc user Let's try it. So LXC create. The type is the special type. Download. We'll give it a name of unprivileged Ubuntu trusty and 64. So let's see what happens. Obviously the root of S is going to be kind of large. I'm going to come back when it's done. Okay. So once it's got the root of S, it's pretty fast. We actually have a container now. It's amazing. LXC start we give it a name of unprivileged Damon come on baby come on oh crap well it's lovely okay I'm back so the problem was that I somehow didn't own my own C groups yet, which you can see by catting out proc self C group. This was all just a root slash. So I've actually just rebooted the machine. I imagine that actually just logging out and then logging in again as that user uh, would be the would be enough to do this. But anyway, so afterwards, after we did the last step, just reboot the machine or log out and log back in as the LXC user, and then we can do a uh, LXC start name unprivileged and we're gonna start this as a daemon and then we can do LXC list and there it is so we can go ahead and and we're in here is this namespace. You can see it thinks all these things are running as root, but even if I break out of here and get root privileges here, all I've got is a regular unprivileged user account on the machine that's hosting this container. So there you go. Enjoy playing with unprivileged containers. Uh, this, If I had to deploy LXC right now, and I actually have worked at places that have deployed thousands of these, I think you should do it unprivileged because it's still a young technology, you want to kind of do everything you can to keep a small fire on one of these from spreading to the whole system. If this is helpful, just uh, subscribe. Happy hacking.